Today let's go over Star Wars Episode 9 when it comes to the character of Luke Skywalker and one big shocking way he could come back to life in the movie. This is Mike Zero here, if you guys are new to the channel do make sure to subscribe to see future Star Wars content. Now as you all know in The Last Jedi which was written and directed by Ryan Johnson we do indeed witness the death of one of our favorite Jedi Masters of all time, Luke Skywalker as he vanishes into the sunset of Ahch 2 and becomes one with the Force. At least that's how Ryan Johnson wanted it to be. Now anything can change with other directors such as J.J. Abrams leading Episode 9 and how he wrote the film with Chris Terrio. Things can always change. I mean, after all, Chris Terrio, he worked on Justice League and that was a movie in which Superman comes back to life, but we'll have to wait and see what happens with Luke Skywalker. But looking here, there's one big way that Luke Skywalker come, could very well come back to life. If you guys go ahead and check out a book by J.W. Winsler, or Rinsler, I should say. It's called The Making of Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Now, parts of the early script imply that Jedi can return to the physical realm from the netherworld itself by their very own will. Now, there was a part, there was a sequence originally where the Force Ghosts of Yoda and Obi-Wan Kenobi appear in front of the Emperor scene with Luke Skywalker. However, this is where things get very interesting. During the Endor celebration scene, all right, in the actual movie, you do see the Force Ghosts of Obi-Wan, Yoda, and Anakin just, you know, silently looking at Luke and Leia, brother and sister. Now, this is the real interesting piece. In the early part of the script for Return of the Jedi, it states, Ben's voice, they're talking about Obi-Wan, Ben's voice, Luke, you should be celebrating, the Emperor is gone, and there is a future for the galaxy. Luke looks up and sees Ben move out of the darkness into the moonlit glade. He is not a shimmering image, but real flesh and blood. Luke stands in surprise. Luke says, Ben, you've come back. Ben says, my need to stay in the netherworld has been resolved. Your father turned to the good side and I was able to disrupt his journey. Luke turns to see an old man emerge from the darkness of the forest. Ben says, here is the good Skywalker, my old friend and your father. Luke actually rushes to his father and embraces him. Yoda steps into the glen and looks up at them. So this is real interesting stuff now, isn't it? That's an early part of the script for Return of the Jedi. Now, if you guys want to go ahead and look at that little piece, I will provide a little link below in the description if you guys would like to read the whole entire thing. Now, of course, there's going to be other reasons as to why, you know, Luke Skywalker can very well come back to life in Episode 9. There are other ways, but to me, this is the most... I guess you could say useful way where the force user can willingly come back to, you know, physical form and essentially interact with others because this was an original idea in Return of the Jedi that was ultimately scrapped. Now, the other reason, all right, that Luke Skywalker could come back to life, the other way is by teleportation. Now, the back shot of Luke shows the robes fall. However, the rest of his clothing, all right, under the robes are not even seen vanishing. He sees the twin sons, but Ryan said he left that ambiguous if that was in Luke's mind or if it was Octu's sons. They could retcon this as Luke Skywalker essentially teleporting to Tatooine if they really wanted to. Now, in Legends, Darth Jadis and Vitiate could teleport, however, mostly not being able to go very far while doing it. The other way is by use of the wills. Now, the wills are godlike beings watching over all of the events happening across time and space. Now, surely they could give the wills a power in order to bring people back to life, such as Luke Skywalker if they really wanted to. And lastly, time travel. Star Wars Rebels Season 4 by Dave Filoni, he is the man who made time travel a canon piece within the Star Wars universe and the franchise itself with the episodes, all right, well, with the episode Worlds Between Worlds in which Ezra Bridger essentially saves Ahsoka from Darth Vader. And that's how she essentially lived on. So that's a very cool, you know, 
piece as well. The whole concept of time travel. I just don't know if that's really as to Star Wars, though. That might be for other sci-fi epics and sci-fi movies, etc. I'm not quite sure how time travel would really work in Star Wars because then, you know, any death in the franchise may actually feel you know, not so special, even if it's a great death. You know, if it's like, let's say, for example, Obi-Wan Kenobi's death in Star Wars A New Hope, if the concept of time travel applies to Luke Skywalker, technically, they could save Ben, couldn't they? We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> but anyways, guys, I think that the first way is the best way to go is by using the original idea from the early script of Return of the Jedi, in which Obi-Wan comes back from the netherworld. I mean, if you guys listen to it right then and there in the very beginning, you can see it. It says, Luke, you should be celebrating. The Emperor is gone and there is a future from the galaxy. Luke looks up and sees Ben move out of the darkness into the moonlit glade. He is not a shimmering image, but real flesh and blood. Luke stands in surprise. So there you have it guys, hope you all enjoyed the video for today, and if you, get, and if you did, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.